Now, I completely understand that as fans, you, 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 all of you, and especially this honky right here, can be prone to say some stupid, dumb, borderline, idiotic things about professional wrestling from time to time. That is just the way it works. I own it and embrace it. I'm cool with it. Hopefully y'all can do the same thing too. But I also fundamentally understand that when it comes to saying stupid, dumb, crossing over the borderline and just can be complete idiotic, dumb shit, nobody, and I mean nobody, can touch the sheer stupidity of the people involved in today's wrestling business. Nobody. You take all the dumb crap that the so-called idiotic fans say and compare it to all the shit that the people that should, in theory, know better are supposed to know better and what they say, and you come away asking the fundamental question, as I've asked so many times, who's the fucking mark here? Perfect example of that. Let me pull this up. Drew McIntyre last night after NXT TakeOver Chicago opines via his Twitter device, and I quote, I suggest the Raw roster checks out NXT TakeOver tonight. Ask yourself if you're working hard enough and truly deserve to be part of the number one roster in the world. If the answer is no, this show will be a harsh wake-up call of the talent coming for you if we don't eliminate you first. Hmm. So we cross that border between complete mark dumb shit and still somewhat at the end trying to salvage it with some kayfabe. Where do you even begin with stupid mark bullshit like this? Number one, let's be realistic. Who in the fuck from a WWE sense and standpoint is Drew McIntyre to be dishing out advice to any damn body? Like actually really truly get yourself over on the main roster and become a star, then talk shit. Do something that actually matters. Then come see us. Then share this diarrhea on social media. Until then, maybe take some of your own advice, work a little harder, and more importantly, shut the hell up! Like, who the fuck is Drew McIntyre? Like, it would be one thing if somebody like, let's say, Roman Reigns said this because he's at the top of the company. Or Braun Strowman said this because he's near the top of the company. Or an AJ Styles said this because he's at the top of the company. Or a Seth Rollins said this and he's at the top of the company, especially considering Seth Rollins and the stuff that he had to overcome being an ROH guy, da 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 He's become a decent-sized star for the company. He's done well for himself, surely, in the seven-figure club. If those guys said something like this, or a hunter said something like this, you know what? It carries some weight and legitimacy behind it and is not necessarily Mark bullshit. Why? Because unlike fucking Drew McIntyre, they've actually made it to the top. Unlike Drew McIntyre, they're actually in a position where they have the credibility, whether you like it or not or agree with it or not, to have some type of ability to generate buy-in when they say this shit because it would actually mean something coming for them because they would actually sound like they know what the hell they're talking about. Look, I have no problem with finding that NXT TakeOver Chicago show entertaining. I have no problem with fans enjoying it. I really, truly don't believe me. I have no problem with wrestlers outside of WWE and within WWE enjoying the show, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with that. But when somebody like Drew McIntyre, who was Vince's chosen one and still ultimately didn't do shit with it other than get his ass whooped by his ex-wife the first time, then to come around the second time, and they stick you with, wait for it, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. You are in no position to spout off at the mouth with shit like this. And even if you want to fundamentally disagree with me there, let, let's peel this back for a second. Imagine being on the main Raw roster and being worried about somebody in NXT. What in the hell would you care about them? Oh, their shows are better. They have more fun. 
Take your quality of show and shove it down your throat. Take your fun and stick it straight up your ass. Fuck you, pay me. And if your philosophy when it comes to professional wrestling, which is a business still first and foremost, is anything other than that, then ding dong dumb dick, you might be in the wrong damn business. I can imagine somebody like freaking, uh, give me a random person, I'll literally go back to Seth Rollins. And I know he's higher up the food chain in the pecking order, what have you. But imagine Seth Rollins sitting there and being bothered with watching NXT and being fucking jealous. Imagine him being worried because Ricochet or Aleister Black, like, what the fuck is going on here? This dude's making seven damn figures. He's going to fucking worry about these guys flipping and kicking for maybe somewhere between 75 to 100K a year? Are you insane? Like, I can sit there and look at my life now and be like, okay, I have some fun. But can I deal with a whole lot less fun to make, let's say, 200 or 300K a year? You're goddamn right I can because I can buy some fun and I can buy a fucking crooked smile on this damn face. I can't imagine sitting there being worried about the fucking minor leagues or the fucking developmental territory when I'm on the main roster actually getting paid main roster money. Now, sure, you could sit there and say, well, maybe some of the lower level guys and this and that, maybe they should be worried and maybe they should. But fundamentally, if you're worried about that all the time, it's going to consume you anyways. And furthermore, who's to sit there and say that the vast majority of these guys from Adam Cole to Kyle O'Reilly to freaking Aleister Black to the Velvet Team Dream, every one of them, baby! Who's to say that they don't come up to the main roster and just eventually end up in the same spot that some of these other guys that you're fucking talking shit about are in right now any damn ways? Like, how ridiculous to sit there and talk about work ethic and crap in WWE when the truth is, in a lot of cases, that doesn't matter. It may matter from a reliability and dependability standpoint when they're crowning their next chosen one like it did with Cena, like it does now with Roman Reigns. But for the vast majority of the rest of the roster, how much do you really truly think, Drew, that work ethic matters to a hell of fucking beans? The fact is, it fucking doesn't. And you're supposed to know better. Hell, you're in your second fucking go-round with the company. And you still buy into this type of Mark bullshit right here? The Marks like me are the ones that are supposed to say this idiotic crap. Not the Marks like you. Like fucking, what the hell? Let me sit here and worry about whether or not you're working hard enough. Knowing goddamn good and well that it doesn't matter what you do or who you are or how much talent you do or do not have. It comes down to one fundamental question, and this is the only question that matters at WWE for years and still to this day. Does Vince buy into you or does Vince not buy into you? Question. That's it. That is absolutely it. You can take your work ethic and your moves and your look and everything else and throw them in a fucking dumpster fire if Vince doesn't see it. Are you going to tell me Cesaro doesn't work hard? Cesaro looks legit. He wrestles legit. Vince doesn't buy into him. Cesaro doesn't become star. Cesaro doesn't get top spot. And don't give me the microphone bullshit. Exhibit A, Roman Reigns. Exhibit B, so many of these other fucking dudes that get spots at the top. Like Vince, weirdly and strategically at times, picks and chooses who he wants to put in the top spot in certain reasons in certain ways. And sometimes from the outside looking in, it looks like there's absolutely no logic or reason there. But for somebody like Drew McIntyre, who's actually never made it to that top of that company to actually speak like he fucking knows any more than I do, is absolutely ridiculous. And furthermore, it's even more ridiculous when somebody like Drew says it because he should know better. Like, imagine how fucking naive you have to be to think that work, work ethic really truly matters in WWE. Your ability to perform. Like, like that fucking matters to Vince. The only thing that matters, Drew, and anybody that takes Drew's side on this, the only thing, and I emphasize again, the only thing that matters is what Vince thinks. This reminds me of the dumb shit between myself and Cody Rhodes a few months ago. 
where that idiot's talking about the WWE doesn't sabotage people. They don't hold anybody back. But yet, this dumb dick sitting there talking about on Twitter how Vince didn't fucking see it in. Well, ding dong, dumb dick, guess what that means? That means he held you fucking back. It didn't matter how good you were. It didn't matter how talented you were or not. If he doesn't see it, it doesn't matter, period. So what the fuck harsh wake-up call are you talking about? Hell, in some of these cases, some of these talents might be able to leave WWE and do just as well, if not financially better, because you could sit there and say, well, they make a little bit more being an underneath guy in WWE, but they're paying for their car rentals, they're paying for their hotel. Whereas they go on the independent scene and they can leverage themselves well enough, they can get paid decent money per spot appearance and get the independent promotions to potentially cover their travel expenses. To the point where it becomes much more of a wash than a lot of people want to give it credit for. Yes, if you're talking about the AJ Styles and the Roman Reigns and the Braun Strowman, Seth Rollins, guys like that. No, it would be really, really hard for them to make as much money on the independent scene or wrestling just in New Japan or something like that. That is absolutely true. Because of WWE scope, reach, distribution in a variety of ways in terms of their product, in terms of their merchandise, what have you, brand and name recognition, all that goes with that. But for the lower level guys, they could end up net making just about as much money outside of WWE as they do inside of WWE. So what the fuck type of wake up call is it? And ultimately, again, coming back to the fundamental point, it doesn't matter. A lot of these guys surely worked hard to get to where they're at, which is being criminally underused, if not flat out sabotaged and buried. How much harder do you expect them to work? And then you have to ask the really important question, why would it matter? If Vince doesn't see it, he doesn't believe it, he doesn't buy it, you're fucking done. That's why, Drew, instead of getting a push to the main event, you're fucking sitting there wasting your time in tag teams with suspect sissies and doing dumb, stupid shit. Because he doesn't see it in you. And we can blame creative all we want. And not even talking about the fact it doesn't matter how talented the person is or how hard they work or how well they perform. When you put them into this toxic cesspool of the main roster WWE creative process, how many guys can truly overcome and transcend that any damn way? Like, this is such a dumb, idiotic, lacking in proper context tweet. It perfectly epitomizes that whereas the marks used to just be the ones that were in the freaking seats that pay to get in the building, it is truly a land in professional wrestling now where the biggest marks are the ones that go out there and perform in the ring. You truly deserve to be part of the number one roster in the world. I don't the fuck is Drew McIntyre to talk shit about anybody with that. Give me a fucking break. Get a grip on reality, dude.